So I was asked recently what the best fishing lure is for fishing ponds in wind. And as you can tell from today, we got quite a bit of wind in today's pond. And so, you know, when it's calm outside, you can really throw whatever lures you want. It's pretty easy to throw a wacky rig or a crankbait or topwater. When you add wind into the equation, it, it stirs up the ecosystem. It can dirty your water clarity. It can move aquatic vegetation from one side of the pond to the other. And so what is the best lure, in my opinion, for catching fish in ponds when it becomes windy? Give me about seven seconds and I'll tell you. Oh, there's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bring it in here. He was up shallow feeding on bait fish. And that lure for windy pond conditions is none other than the OG, the classic, the spinnerbait. How do you fish it? Where do you fish it? And why do you fish the spinnerbait to catch more windy bass? My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers and catch more fish. And I'm excited for today's topic because we get to discuss one of my favorite things to do, which is pond hop, but also one situation which makes pond hopping a little bit more difficult and that is wind. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and I say we talk about the spinnerbait. The spinnerbait has been around since basically the beginning of time and it is one of the all time bass catchers of all time. I mean, it just catches fish anywhere you go, bass mass classics have been won on it and I bet you more fish in ponds across the world have been caught on spinner baits than we like to admit and if y'all have been following the channel for a long time you know that I used to have a, a period in my life where I hated the spinner bait I didn't think there was a purpose for it I thought the square bill and the vibrating jig were both better lures that kind of fit the, the profile of the spinner bait but the more I fished around really shallow water in East Texas around wood and grass I realized the spinnerbait is a fantastic lure for catching bass, and it's a lot easier of a lure to fish than I even thought it was. I was complicating it. You just throw it out there and you reel it back in. But as always, there's some nuance to it, and so we're gonna talk about kind of my top two reasons for why spinnerbaits work so well in ponds around wind. And the first reason is because wind stirs up the ecosystem. So whether you're fishing big pond, small pond, even a small reservoir, uh, wind, when it pushes through the water, can lift up dirt and grass off the bottom and it can stir up your ecosystem, which means less water visibility. So if you're usually catching your fish on uh, a Texas rig or a swim bait or even a square bill crank bait, sometimes that water gets a little bit too dingy and fish that were used to feeding based on their sight with their eyes now have to feed based on what's going on around them and the vibrations and senses they have. And a spinner bait does the best job of that of any lure. I don't care if we're talking about a really loud chatter bait or, or a really loud crank bait. The pulse of two spinner bait blades in the big presence of the head and the skirt and sometimes the trailer bait as we'll talk about really gives that bait a huge presence in the water and allows fish to find it quickly so when you have wind blow through your ecosystem all of a sudden you get to your pond you're ready to throw a texas rig and you're like this water is dingy pull out the spinnerbait and I guarantee you're going to have more success. Now the problem with the spinnerbait is that, let's say you have a high pressure situation like we have today, where a storm blow blew through, the bass forecast rating was not very good, but it did recommend a spinnerbait. And the reason for that is because of the wind. Now the second reason why I love a spinnerbait in wind is because it allows you to cover water. What wind does, not only does it stir up an ecosystem in, the, in a bad way in terms of water clarity going down, it also stirs up the ecosystem in a good way in that it moves every piece of, of the food chain around the pond, it, usually from one place where they were all the way to another. And so it can tend to spread out fish. Wind, whether I'm on a pond or a big body of water, means that I'm going to be covering water more often than not with a moving bait as opposed to slow fishing with a worm or a jig. But what it tends to do is spreads the fish out from the calm areas into those pockets, those holes, those really, really wind blown banks because it pushes the entire ecosystem to that side. So oftentimes the windy side, that's why we say wind is your friend because wind pushes the entire ecosystem and the spinnerbait is the best way in my opinion to catch fish on a windy bank. I bet you a lot of pro fishermen, if I were to ask them right now, would agree with me. Now when it comes to colors and blades, what do you throw? I'm gonna be imitating as close as what I can, what the fish are eating. And here, water clarity was still about a foot so they 
they could actually see my lure. No need for black and blue, no need for uh, you know orange blades, Colorado blades. I like the willow leaf blades we have here. And I throw an olive shad. This here is the Strike King Pro Series spinner bait. I love olive shad because it's got some green in it. So it looks like a bluegill of sorts. It's got some white and the head is white. So it also could imitate bait fish. And the two of them together look just like a baby bass. And so I just really think olive shad is a great all around pond color. And I will have all of my tackle, as you'll see tons of fish catches linked in the video description below. Please order your tackle through using those links and you can get 10% off using Strike King and Lose using code TRF for Strike King, you know, TRF10 for Strike King and TRF for Lose. If y'all could please click those links and use the codes that helps me out a ton. Talking about gear with the spinnerbait, I love throwing on a seven foot to seven three medium heavy. I guess I should say 610 to seven three. It just depends if I'm target casting or distance casting. Target casting on a boat to stumps to the edge of docks at the 610. If I'm, you know, making long casts out here like I am in this pond, that's a 7.3. Always a medium heavy for me. I just find that medium heavy is the best action for a power, whatever it is, for, uh, for a spinnerbait. And the last thing I always do on my spinner baits is I put a trailer hook. You're gonna see tons of fish catches in this video where the trailer hook is the only reason why I caught those fish. And in a situation like this, I'm not really worried about like getting stuck around trees or bushes. And I haven't even found that a trailer hook adds that many snags to your spinner baits. I think there's only benefits to that. I don't usually throw a swim bait as the, as the trailer on a, on a spinner bait. Most of the time it is just the straight spinner bait for me. I know that if fish are, are tending to miss it, you wanna add some more bulk to the area where the hooks are. As I was mid clip with that camera, it died, so we're gonna finish out on this one right now, but I almost always throw a trailer hook. I really think it helps those fish. Trailer bait, not so much. I say we head on the water, show you guys tons of fish catches, talk about the retrieve with the spinner bait, but I really think if you throw this lure around wind, you're gonna catch more fish. Let's go on the water. Is this spinner bait time? I think so. I'll tell you guys in a second. Oh gosh, there's one, there's one. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. That is a nice one on this windy bank next to a tree. Bring it in, buddy. Bring it in. Oh man, oh man. Gotta have to flip you up over this stuff. Yes, ha 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 ha. Check this bad boy out, y'all. <laughs> on the spinnerbait, I'm telling you. There's something really special about a spinnerbait, ponds, and wind. That just gets the job done. Man, beautiful. Skaploosh. Oh, hit on the fall. That's awesome. That's awesome. Bring it in. Oh, come on. Let's go. They are eating bait fish. It is crazy. I see way more activity on this side than I saw on the other side when I started fishing. And that guy right there got it on the trailer hook. I always, always throw a trailer hook when I'm fishing a spinnerbait. Because you never know when they're gonna hit it weird. And that guy is actually blind on that side. Hope y'all can see well. I know the sunlight's kinda funky right now. Oh no. Dang it. I can't lose this spinnerbait. Hey, that's why I wear flip flops. Oh my gosh, holy cowbunga. Oh my gosh, where the heck did that kid fish come from? Oh my goodness, brother, you are nuts. I hope y'all saw that on my chest mount. Oh my gosh, that fish kamikaze this thing three feet from the bank. Oh my gosh. Props to my 15 pound Seagar and Vizex for holding up because that would have broken off on a lot of, uh, of line brands out there. My goodness. Okay, they still wanna feed. It's getting a little tougher out here, but they still wanna feed. My gosh. Whew. That'll get your blood going. I'm putting my buff up, it's getting too hot. Y'all know that I've worked with AFCO for five years now at this point, I think. This is their Barracuda Geocool shirt. I almost never go fishing without wearing one of their shirts, so. If y'all want to use code TRF, you can save 15% on your order. And that's one heck of a deal right there. Oh, no way. Oh, gosh. 
Hey, I got a giant, buddy. I got a giant. This thing's big. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hit it on the fall. Hit it on the fall deep. Oh, I'm not sure how well you have it. Not sure. Uh, pro probably pretty well after a jump like that. Hey, 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 chill, chill. Ha ha. Look at this one, boys and girls. On the spinner bait. And the great thing about the spinner bait that I don't think I mentioned earlier in my talking portion is that it's a great lure for on the fall. And what I mean by that is that when most lures fall, they don't really have any kind of action. You know, when a vibrating jig falls, a, a regular jig, Texas rig, most of the time, unless you have appendages, they're not causing any action. But on the spinner bait, those blades are turning as that lure falls, which can trigger a strike from a fish that may be, uh, you know, pressured by the same Texas rigs, same sorts of lures. They see something falling from above their heads that's got flashy stuff, and sometimes they can't help but come up and eat it. That right there is awesome. Four and a half pounder. That's what I'm talking about, baby. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing? All right, see you, big girl. Thanks for biting the spinner bait. Oh, another one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, keep the rod tip down. He is swimming at me. These fish are aggressive today. We found a little pod of them, folks. Gosh. You might be able to tell, but I don't use drag on my bait casters. I use, I use my thumb by opening the spool and letting out line as I see fit. I think it works better for me. Lose less fish that way. And bring it up here. Yes, sir. They're biting the spinner bait. Not going to complain about that. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's keep this mojo going. Oh, there's one. Oh, this one could be big. This one could be big. It feels nice, the way that it hit it at least. The way that it knocked it. Oh, yep, yeah. come on. A ah, nice one, not a huge one. Like I said, wind can do one of two things. It can concentrate them or it can spread them out. And it usually spreads out the groups when you find them. Man, you stink and find them. You're not going to find a group like this, you know, statistically, if you're throwing the standard stuff you work. Jig, Texas rig, top water. you got to make just as many casts out into the middle, parallel on the bank, as you did with other lures. But a spinnerbait helps you do it way faster. Chunky dunk right there, folks. Beautiful. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Bring it in. Bring him in, bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. Right here to the bank, give him the old lip. And that's another one on the spinnerbait. They are stacked in this corner, which makes perfect sense. The wind should be pushing them over here. Should be pushing the entire ecosystem. The phytoplankton, the bluegill, the minnows, and of course, the bass. And I'm smoking them, folks, like a brisket for 26 hours. There's one. Yes, sir. Feels big. Feels big. I can't tell, but it feels nice. Come on, stay down. Stay down. Oh, gosh, they're so strong in here. It's like not even head shaking. It's just, it's just swimming. It's just swimming. Oh my gosh, it is big. Do not jump. Do not jump. I think it's bigger than the first one. I think it's bigger than the first one I had. I don't know. It's a nice one though. Oh, chill, 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 chill. Bring it in. Bring it in. Nice and easy, nice and easy, nice and easy. Get in my hand, get in my stinking hand. <laughs> Look at that fish. Look at this fish. Oh, had the regular hook and the trailer hook. That's how you know they're not getting off. And that right there, folks, is a beautiful Texas fall pond bass. Oh, this is awesome. I'm loving this. And they just keep coming, folks. And they just keep coming. Beautiful. There's one. There's one. Oh, feels grande. Feels grande. I'm liking this. Standing in the water. Oh. Oh, yes. Another big one. This is not a bad time, boys and girls. This is a good time. Oh, you got some grass on you. He's got some slime. And he's not four pounds. He is three pounds, but we will take him. Thank you, buddy. Oh, oh, there's a fish right there. There's a fish right there. 
he is he is feeding on baitfish right there. This is so much fun. I'm loving this. Now talking about retrieval with the spinnerbait and wind, most of the time I'm still going to be slow rolling it. I feel like a lot of people nowadays still burn their spinnerbaits back in and I think unless you've got like a really really shallow grass flat or really unpressured fish, I don't think burning a spinnerbait really works a whole lot anymore. I cast it out there, let it sink all the way to the bottom, right there is about two and a half feet, and I, I what I call slow roll. I will reel the spinnerbait as slowly as I possibly can while keeping it in the depth zone that I want. So if I reel it too slowly, it's gonna be dragging across the bottom. So I reel it just a little bit faster to keep it above the bottom, occasionally giving it a stop like that with my reel, as that will cause the spinnerbait to kind of turn over in the, the skirt to flare. And then I start it right back up again. And I've gotten tons of bites over my entire fishing lifetime by doing that. You can just reel it straight back in, that works too but uh, I prefer to give it a little bit of pauses every once in a while. Sometimes I'll be reeling it and I'll give it a little rod jerk like that and then reel it again. And you'll notice as soon as you stop the spinnerbait and restart it, it takes about two or three turns of the handle for it to actually get going again. But sometimes that's all it takes to get a fish that's following it, checking it out, it's curious to commit and eat that thing. Oh my gosh, holy cow, holy cow, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my goodness, did y'all see that? Did, I really hope one of my two cameras caught that. Oh my gosh, oh, holy cow. That fish came out of absolutely nowhere and sharkitoed this thing. Wow, and he doesn't have much. Oh, bring it in, bring it in, buddy, bring it in. Oh, oh gosh, oh. That right there, folks, is stinking exhilarating. Holy cow, and he's got it by the trailer hook. That's why I always throw a trailer hook on a spinner bait. There's no downsides, in my opinion. It's just as weedless with a, with, with a, uh, with a trailer hook as it is without. And that right there is an awesome, awesome fall fish. Four pounders are plenty today. And with that, folks, I think we're gonna, we're gonna call it a video. One heck of a day, one heck of a bite. I might still keep fishing for a little bit just to have some fun. But if y'all enjoyed, hit that subscribe button. And hey, if you want to see a very similar video to this, I will leave two in the corners. Uh, one is going to be the spinnerbait versus the chatterbait. The differences, similarities, where you should throw each one. I'll leave that linked over here in this corner. And if you want to check out a full length instructional on that chatterbait, because it's very similar to this lure, I just find in slightly dirtier water ponds, spinnerbait works better. I'll leave that video linked up here in this corner. Thank you guys for staying all the way to the end. You guys are the best type of viewer who watches the whole video. And again, I hope you learned something. My name's Tyler. We'll see y'all next time right here on TRF.